Hey guys, it's Steph here. I wanted to show you a project that my husband and I just finished. If you're new to my channel, we just took over a landscape business. So this is our very first residential project. It's been really fun. I just wanted to highlight all of the different plants that we planted in this area. It's a zone 5B, almost a zone 4. We're kind of up in the mountains and it's a little bit more on the drier side, higher elevation. Our winters are kind of unpredictable. Last winter was amazing. We had more snowpack than we've ever had. Then there's some winters where it's a little bit more on the dry side so i wanted to find plants that could tolerate most conditions and there's a lot of hydrangeas in this property that she's going to absolutely love that like the part shade the shadier area so let's walk around let's highlight all of these different types of plants in here how gorgeous it looks they have fun little seating areas a vegetable garden area just so many different things and this was something i was really nervous about because it was our first project so i picked out all the plants and they really like grasses so there's going to be a nice lush area in their front yard it's going to fill in kind of naturalize it's going to do really well so let's take a look at it so here is their vegetable garden area look at those beautiful copper garden boxes we use some iron edging we decide to go with chat as a more inexpensive option rather than using papers you can walk on it, it stays in place it's nice on your feet we've got a lot of fruit trees some peaches some apples we've got a lot of grandma grass some beautiful salvia catmint lavender she loves purple so we gave her a lot of that we've got some lime twister sedum right here right here we put a tricolor beach to anchor that corner and then we've got some ladies mantle that's going to naturalize throughout they like the shade look at the foliage how interesting is that it's going to get the cutest flowers we've got some serrata tough stuff hydrangea um, that's going to fill in this area we left the pathway open for the hose they're tougher than your macrophylla the buds don't seem to die off with the late frost so that's going to look absolutely beautiful as that tricolor beach grows tall it's going to take a while. Right here we put a climbing hydrangea to anchor this corner and to climb up her beautiful column. It's going to give such nice interest. It likes the shadier areas. Everything right here gets afternoon shade. So look at those beautiful stairs that lead you to the garden. They're heavy duty. A lot of rocks. Here's the before of their front area. It's quite large, heavy plants. Some more of those grasses. I love the Cecilaria autumnalis. It's such a great one to pair with your perennials. There's nice drifts of those throughout this entire front area so it's going to look very cohesive and calming and imagine when this all fills in it's just going to be stunning. And some more of that grandma grass and she wanted some roses so we put in some cute lights right there first of all. Look how cute those are. And then these white drift roses. I can't exactly remember the variety. It gets about two to three feet tall and wide so that's going to anchor her front walkway right there and be a beautiful blooming flower for the whole gardening season and then on this corner I wanted to put a Kwanzaa cherry just to give it some height in the front yard to give her some beautiful blooms to look at these get double blooms they're absolutely gorgeous one of my favorites cold hardy down to zone five but they are not messy they don't drop fruit and the wind kind of just blows the petals off which are actually quite pretty when they fall another little pathway right here in the pathways we use crushed pearl which is really cool never used that thought it was really pretty and we've got some blue oak grass, which they loved. Then we planted some mini Mavet hydrangeas for the front porch area, since she loves them. These only get three feet tall, three feet wide. They're so easy to prune. They like the part shade. They do so well here. My Incredibles do amazing. And we've got another one to anchor this corner. Some more of those grasses. The seating area is gonna be awesome. It's gonna give them a great mountain view. They can come out here and relax. These are the blue totem spruce. They're a columnar spruce. The deer won't eat them. They only get three feet wide to about 12 feet tall. Some of my favorites, a nice shady tree for this corner, Japanese maple. It doesn't get very big. A pumilla spruce, which is not deer resistant. We will have to protect that. This is the Carmina biacova. One of my favorites, it gets fall color, but stays more compact. Some spirea that's gonna spread throughout. So here's a little before of all the plantings. We planted a lot of perennials, some more of those spireas and some more of that cat mint throughout, lavender, huskers, red, penstemon. Then right there, look at the fall color on that spirea. It's incredible. I like the tour gold a little bit better than your other spireas. And then right here, some blue meringue lilacs, cold hardy down to zone three. So they're gonna have a beautiful bloom in early spring and they'll give you a second flush of blooms in fall. Here's some sassy summer taffy yarrow, which I love. I'm gonna put some of them in my cutting garden. Look at that bright pop of cheer and fun color that they're going to enjoy from their patio. 
So we've got three of those Bloomering Lilacs, and then right here are some of my favorite hydrangeas, the Ruby Slippers. They like the shade. They get this beautiful white bloom that turns to red, but that foliage is gonna turn a dark red in the fall, which is stunning. So we have five of those that are gonna fill in nicely, and this is the Coral Burst Crab Apple. It's gonna be her patio tree, and it's also gonna have beautiful blooms for her to enjoy through those windows. It doesn't get very big. You can keep it more compact by pruning it. Right here is the Hortzman Blue Atlas Cedar. It's a dwarf variety, it grows really slowly. This is the side of her house. Look at all of those rocks. So many huge rocks that we had to work with. And so we put an Amur Maple. The seeds get this beautiful bright red. It's absolutely stunning. I love that one. And then we've got some Ivory Halo Dogwood. Tough shrub, gives you that interest during the winter time with those red twigs that are great for putting in your Christmas container pots going to fill in right there and I love pairing them with daylilies. We've got some hardy plumbago, a nice ground cover. These blue blooms come out from late summer till fall. Those leaves are going to turn bright red. It doesn't spread very quickly, not too aggressive, but just a tough perennial. But this is the Carl Forrester grass. It gets a little bit taller, three to four feet tall and wide. I love the plumes on this because you can use them for your fall wreaths. They're just really decorative and are just really nice for so many different things. And then we've got right here a weeping white spruce. They get up to 30 feet tall, six feet wide with time, but that takes a really long time. So it's gonna be a perfect little accent tree right here. And then I love the blue globe spruces. These are deer resistant. Everything has to be deer resistant because they have a lot of deer, but they get about three to five feet tall and wide. They will get up to eight feet tall in the perfect setting, but that blue color is beautiful. Then we've got some low scape aronia, beautiful spring blooms. Look at that glossy foliage, the toughest shrub. You cannot kill this one. It's good for natural erosion. It gets these beautiful fall berries that you can actually eat. And it's just amazing. So this is my favorite tree right now. I love this red obelisk purple beech tree. And it's going through a little bit of transplant shock. We planted everything in the heat of the summer. So this is normal to struggle a little bit. I love these because they grow really slowly, but you can prune them heavily. You can use them as hedges. So they're not gonna get too tall right here. We gotta make sure those windows don't get covered so she can see the mountains, but just a beautiful red foliage columnar tree. That's more of that low scape aronia. We needed to anchor this corner. So we put some massive rocks and put some of these quakies to tie in with the mountain. We wanted everything to look more cohesive. Some more of that lavender a beautiful baby blue spruce. I think that's what this one is called. It's got such beautiful blue uh, needles. And then we've got some Quakies, which I don't typically plant in my own yard. And then we've got some Sedum Autumn Joy. Love them around rocks. They're gonna give you that late summer to fall color. Russian Sage does incredible here. They have so many varieties now. I think this is the Lacy Blue and I love pairing it with roses. So we have some more of those roses that we had in the front yard. And this is the Hoopside Blue Spruce. This is my favorite for blue color. It gets about 20 feet tall, 10 to 15 feet wide with thyme. And then some more of those roses, Spirea, and then some more sedum. So I think that area turned out super cool. Okay, so let's move to the backyard. This is a fun area too. A lot of rock work, a lot of areas that we needed to create some privacy. So here's it before. So you can see how much work this was. Look at the transformation. Another nice seating area. Right here, some more of those blue totem spruce because we're trying to block out the neighbors, but not the mountain view so they don't get very tall. And just a great one for tighter spaces. So as those fill in, it's gonna be really nice for them to enjoy, especially during the winter time. Then right here, she has a nice little memorial for her dog that passed away. She liked the look of agave and we wanted to create a little area for that, but agave is not cold hardy down to zone five. So we put a lot of different sedum, some hens and chicks. And then right here we have a butterfly bush. It's cold hardy down to zone five. And then we've got some barberry bushes. This is the Concord Japanese barberry, deer resistant, great shrub. And some Medusa alium. I like this variety because it comes out late summer, has really dark color. And then we're putting some Coloratus euonymus, a great climber to soften up all of these rocks. We need to find some more. It's been hard to find, but it's gonna climb up throughout here. And then we've got some blue fescue grass. It's gonna soften up this edge a little bit. So this Japanese blood good, it's gonna be beautiful with those totems and provide some shade. And then we have some roses right here, some oh so easy peasy roses and some columbine. I think they're gonna be great. They'll naturalize and kind of intermingle nicely over the years. The Wells Deer Run Spruce, 
super deer resistant. It's got a nice shape. And it's just a cool tree. It's a little bit more on the blue side. It's it about 12 feet tall and five to six feet wide. So not huge, maybe a little bit bigger. And right here, we've got a ginkgo to put in her container pot. It's gonna get beautiful fall golden buttery color. Cold Hardy down to zone three, so we can leave it in the container pot because she's a zone five. And right here, she has a bocce ball court, a nice bench to enjoy it. They're gonna really have a lot of fun back here. We've got lights underneath this wood that's gonna light up at night. How cool is that? And then we've got some columnar oaks to add privacy. And they're gonna hold on to their leaves for a long time, late into the winter, so. That's a nice bonus to give them a little bit more privacy. Look at the shape of those leaves. They're pretty cool. They have cute little acorns, not super messy, and they can handle a lot of pruning. Right here, there's some more of those Medusa Ulium. I thought it would be playful and fun next to the bocce ball with some little blue bunny grasses. I just love the two <laughs> paired together. And then we've got Shoshnaria right here. It's a long blooming, low growing perennial. It'll just go on and on. So that'll be some nice added interest to enjoy while they're playing their game. So look at this beautiful shot right here. It's looking great. Okay, last but not least, we're almost to the end of this. Try not to make it too long. So here's the before of this massive rock wall. So we added some Norway Cupressina spruces right here to add some privacy against the neighbors. And it gets about 30 feet tall, six feet wide, and they're faster growers. And then we added a golden tower elderberry, which gets about 12 feet tall and only four to five feet wide. This is a very interesting elderberry, absolutely gorgeous, beautiful white flowers. And that foliage is a nice color and will be a nice contrast to everything else, but it grows pretty quickly. So look at this up close look of the Norway. It's really a great tree for our climate. They do really well and they grow really fast and they got a little pathway. Right here is the raspberry spears crab apple. I chose crab apples because they're cold hardy and they're more resistant to diseases. And this berry is going to persist until late winter. So a lot of the birds will probably eat them before they drop. They didn't want a lot of messy things in their yard. And we'll just take a view of the front one more time. They lined up the entire front yard with that pathway. I cannot wait to show you as this starts to fill in over the years. Spring is just going to be such a beautiful pop of color and then you'll get so much interest the entire year. The best thing about this was they were super happy about it and they absolutely loved it. I'm back at my house. It's a day or two later. This video was quite the video to edit. Anyways, this was a fun project. We learned so much. We're grateful that the owners trusted us to do this big first project start to finish. There's so many other people that helped with all of this. It took a lot longer than I thought it would. I got familiar with so many more plants plants that do really well in our zone 6 B climate trees I continue to learn so much about trees anyways I hope you guys like this inspiration a little bit of the before and after transformation thanks for watching and I will talk to you later bye